We know that on September 14th, all the eyes of the boxing world will be on the Floyd Mayweather Canelo Alvarez match to see how that one's going to turn out. But just before that happens, before that worldwide audience, there will be another fight that I think almost all those boxing fans are just as curious about. And that is the super lightweight matchup between the champion Danny Garcia and the hard-punching Argentine Lucas Matisse. This match was put on this pay-per-view card as an extra incentive and bonus to fans, and it will be just that. Everyone expects an exciting and hard-fought bout. The 25-year-old Garcia will try to defend his titles against Matisse in a fight that many have him as the underdog. Now, he comes in off a win over Zab Judah, a win in which he was very impressive for most of the fight, but tired down the stretch and saw Judah come back uh, to make it a much closer fight. And some are wondering if that's a sign that he's not going to be able to deal with the pressure of Lucas Matisse. But Garcia is a skilled technician in the ring, a very good boxer puncher. The 30-year-old Matisse has 32 KOs in 34 fights. Enough said about his power. He has two losses, interestingly, close decision losses to uh, Zab Judah and Devin Alexander. Both fights that many people, including me, thought he won. He had both men down in those fights, but couldn't get a decision. He says he has changed his outlook since those fights, and truth be told, he has gone on a string of KO victories since the loss to Alexander. And that brings us to the keys to victory. For Matisse, he's got to set a quick pace from the beginning. There are some that feel that if Garcia is allowed to settle in and fight at a slower pace, he'll be able to control the bout as the boxer puncher. Matisse has one of the strongest right hands in boxing, and Garcia can be hit with that punch against Amir Khan. He was raked over the coals with that punch before he was able to hurt Amir Khan and get him out of there. But I think it might be the left hook of Matisse that could provide the end of this fight. That left hook was very present in his last fight, a win over Lamont Peterson, and it has emerged a lot in the last three or four fights, and I think it's probably the secret weapon for Matisse. Garcia needs to throw combinations. Sometimes when Matisse is faced with combination punching, he kind of freezes. Uh, Alusagana Jose was able to do that when he fought Matisse, even though he would ultimately succumb to Matisse's power. Garcia cannot trade left hooks with him. Lamont Peterson did that, and it was a disaster. Because the problem is, Matisse also has a granite chin. The right hand of Garcia is an excellent punch, and it's a punch that Matisse can be hit with. And Danny's going to need to land it early in this fight and often. Probably the onus in this fight is on Danny Garcia. He and his father trainer, Angel Garcia, have steadfastly insisted that they were happy to have this fight. They weren't pressured into it, as some have suggested, that they wanted to challenge uh, Lucas Matisse and accept the toughest fighter uh, that Danny Garcia could fight. And they would point to the fact that Danny Garcia, who has never lost as a professional, is a winner, and that's true. He's a very solid fighter. The problem for Garcia is that to beat Matisse, it would seem you have to either be a very, very clever and quick boxer, or you have to be a fighter with unimaginable power because Matisse seems to have that granite chin. Now Garcia, who is a very sound fighter, is neither of those things. He's kind of like the power forward or guard that you see in basketball that puts up a nice triple-double, and at the end of the game, you're not sure quite how he did it. Uh, well, that's Danny Garcia. You look up at the end, and guess what? He's always got his win. This is a fight that boxing fans have been salivating over for months and months. Now, one of the uh, interesting things to me is that they named the judges uh, for this fight, and I won't even tell you who they are. You know why? Because it's all academic. Those judges, I guarantee you, will not figure into this fight. This fight is not going 12 rounds. Someone is getting knocked out. Of course, I'll be happy to call this fight on Showtime pay-per-view, 
And I will also participate in our post-fight coverage here on the Boxing Channel. We will not only have pre-fight coverage of the weigh-in and the final press conference, but complete post-fight coverage I'll be covering along with Marcos Viegas.